Let's everybody stand to their feet. We want to welcome everybody here tonight after a long year. Looked like it was yesterday, didn't it? <laughs> and we're back again. I tell you, time goes by so fast. But we appreciate the Lord because he's kept us. And we've been able to rejoice because God is good. He's good to us. And he opens up his mind and his heart to give to us so freely so we can become more like him to be able to save others. And I thank the Lord today. I thank him for each and every one of you because you're a product of our prayers. And I know I say this all the time, but it's true. It's true. Because we don't know what God is doing when we pray in the Holy Ghost. And for, the, for you all that know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, sound off. We're going to pray tonight. And we're going to invoke the spirit of the living God here tonight. Because we came, we're prepared, and we want to receive from him. And I thank him because he is so good. The Lord is good. Amen. 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 We'll let everybody come on in. But I thank God that you all got here safely. I know you all have encountered some problems, but that's okay. You know, it wouldn't be like the devil if he didn't try you. <laughs> and that's what I say, try you. He going to try you. But, you know, when you say you go ahead and roll on over him just like a steamroller and keep on moving. Keep on moving. But that's how you know you're in the will of God when you get some resistance. No resistance. Hey, look around. Check it out. Check it out. See what's going on. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's join hands around this room. We're going to connect. We're going to touch and agree. We're going to do some spiritual warfare. I know a lot of you guys are uh, you're normally on the uh, prayer line. And if you're not, y'all start getting on the prayer line. There's a lot of work to be done in prayer. And we're just trusting the Lord that He's going to start to stir this thing up. But do you know that's why it gets stirred up? Because of the power of prayer. When you pray and you believe with other believers that believe the same thing, the devil can't stand a chance. And when you incorporate prayer, genuine prayer in your lives, he has something to reckon with. Because we're making petition unto the a holy God, our God. And when he baptizes you in the Holy Ghost, that's your prayer language between you and him. Nobody else has one like you. He only gives that to you. That's for you to communicate with him. And that's the difference in a lot of people that say they know the Lord, that they don't have the Holy Ghost. And if he chooses to give you the Holy Ghost, then you got something. You can't take it lightly. If you don't have it, make sure you, you ask him for it before you leave here. And hey, hold him accountable. Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. I came prepared and I came ready to receive your spirit. But you got to move your mind out the way. You can't figure out how you're going to do it. Just open up and receive. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. There may be something or somebody or a situation you may be holding on to that's blocking you from receiving the Holy Ghost. And when he tell you what it is, don't say, oh, that's the devil. The devil ain't going to tell you to go and get free. He's not. He's going to try to tell you, oh, no, it's okay. It was okay for you to feel like that. or It was okay for you to say that to them. They deserved it. They shouldn't have came in your face like that. You see, that's how he talked. He try to get you to justify. Don't justify anything. If you know it's wrong, repent and get it right. Get it right, because we're believing God for power, a power demonstration. We want to see him demonstrate himself. What is the difference between us and anybody else if you've never seen a demonstration of the power of God? Amen? And we don't have time to play. I don't. You know, I, I don't. I know a lot of y'all don't. And I thank God for that, because we mean business. We mean business with the devil tonight. Amen? Amen. Let's go. Let's get after it. All y'all know how to pray in the Holy Ghost. Sound off. Amen. All right. Let's get going. Thank you, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we yield to you right now, Lord God, because we know, Lord God, without a shadow of a doubt, Lord God, it's your good pleasure, Father God, 
to pour out your spirit, Lord God, and to demonstrate yourself, Lord God, before your people, Lord Jesus. Lord, it's not a myth. Your word is not a myth, Lord God. It's not a, a fictional novel, Lord God, that was written, Lord God, just because. Lord God, your word is true. It changes. It heals. It sets free. It delivers, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We know, Lord God. But for those, Lord God, that have accepted you, Lord God, and asked you to come into our lives and to change us, Lord, and we were born again, we know you're real, Lord Jesus. We know, Lord God, that somehow, some way, Lord God, along the way, we got off track, Lord God. But Father God, we repent tonight, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, we just ask that, Lord, don't allow us, Lord God, show us when the devil is trying to come in, Lord God, and keep our minds bound with the world, Lord God, and world and fleshy stuff, Lord God. There's nothing, Lord God, holy, Lord God, about the world. It's dry and it's dead, Lord God. It leaves you thirsty, Lord Jesus. Still looking for, Lord God, that which completes, that which is fulfilling, Father God. And Lord, you left that place in our souls, Lord God, only for you, Lord God, only for you, Lord Jesus. So we call on you, Lord God. We call on you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Ghost tonight to roll through here, Lord Jesus. And we lift up our hearts. You say, stop the gift that's down in us, Lord God. And we thank you for the Holy Ghost. And tonight we're going to stir him up, Lord Jesus. As believers praying in the, on the most holy faith, Lord God. Our brother Paul said, I pray more than you all. And you told us, Lord God, in your word to covet, Lord God, the best gifts, Lord God. And that's to edify your church, Lord God. Father, I know there's the gift of healing in this room, Lord God. The gift of prophecy, Lord God. The gift, Lord God, of faith, Father God. Father God, all the fruit of the Spirit are manifested in this room under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Father, to this weekend, Lord God, you will push your people to the next level. All that's those that want to go, Lord God, and that believe you, Father God. And we're here, Lord God, with our arms open wide, Lord God, our hearts and our minds, Lord God, fastened to heaven, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you today, Lord Jesus, that you desire to do a work in us, Lord Jesus. You desire, Lord God, and we invoke your presence here with us tonight, Lord. And to rest and rule and, and abide with us, Lord, forever, Father. And Lord, we look to you, Lord God, for everything, Lord Jesus. Now, devil, we burn you right now in the name of Jesus. We burn every spirit of sickness and disease and infirmity. We burn you right now in Jesus' name, all spirits of lackadaisicalness. All spirits of pride and ego, we curse you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for your word to come forth mightily, Lord Jesus. And we lift you up tonight, Lord God. Now, devil, we burn you right now in the name of Jesus to have folks looking around and, Lord God, wondering what's going to happen. But, Lord, we don't care how you do it all. We ask that you do it, Lord God. We ask that you demonstrate yourself, Lord God. We don't care how you do it. If it looks strange, then it's a strange work. But Lord, we thank you today, Jesus. And we magnify your name, Lord Jesus. We are your people, Lord God. We are your church, Lord God. And we know you will not deny your church, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, and we call on you, Lord Jesus. We ask that you do a work, Lord God, according to your will, Lord. Do it, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord, for this is the day that you have made, Lord. We will rejoice in it and be glad, Lord God. Oh, God, we invoke your presence, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Jesus. Oh God, we call on you, Lord, because we need you, Lord. Oh God, I don't believe that you're leaving people down here, Lord God. Oh God, without a demonstration of your power in our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord God, there this world, Lord God, needs you, Lord. Oh God, they're so hard up, Lord Jesus, for words spoken over their lives, Lord. Broken down, Lord God, from people putting curses on them, Lord, and vexes and hexes and soulish prayers and psychic prayers, Lord God. But Lord, we know you have all power, Lord God. All power, Lord God, was given up to you, Lord God. And you said, great is he that is in us than he that is in this world, Lord. And we glorify you, Lord God. Oh, God, we lift you up, Jesus. Oh, we magnify your name, Lord. Oh, we call on you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we know millions, Lord God, that need you, Lord God. Oh, God, that got a sin sick soul, Lord God. Oh, God, who just can't believe that they can go on one more day, Lord Jesus. Lord God, the spirit of suicide, Lord God, is marching around this world, Lord God. Oh, God, killing, Lord God, those that it pleases, Lord. But, Lord, we ask that you have mercy, Lord God. We pray for the laborers, Lord God, in your vineyard, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that everywhere we go, Father, we'll touch somebody's life, Lord God, Lord. You touch them, Lord God. Touch through us, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, we ask that you touch through us, Lord. And we call on you, Jesus. We call on you, Jesus, because they need you, Lord. They need you, Jesus. They need you, Lord. It's not about us, Lord God. It's all about you. And Lord, we call on you tonight, Lord God, because we know we cannot do anything without you, Jesus. And we ask you, Lord God, to come and make your glory known here in this place. All around this resort, Lord God, let your glory be made manifest, Lord God. The, pe the people will want to know who are we and why are we here. And Lord God, we thank you for speaking through us, Lord Jesus. Speak through your church, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord. We lift up Sister Maisha to you right now, Lord God. She's upstairs, Lord. We ask that you touch her body, Lord God, and heal her, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your wondrous works be made known, Father. Lord God, that girl never complains, Lord Jesus. She never complains about anything, Lord. She just keeps on going, Lord God. Keeps on going, Lord God. Effortless and tireless, Lord God. And she's hurting all the time, Father. But Lord, we know that you put strength in her, Lord God, to go on, Lord God. So we lift up to you tonight, Lord Jesus, as your servant, Lord God. And we ask that you strengthen her, Lord God. Heal her, Lord God. Heal her. We beg you to heal her, Father God. Lord, you won't deny yourself, Lord God, and we know that, Lord God. You cannot deny yourself. And Father, we thank you for it right now, Lord. We glory in you and you alone, Father. We glory in you, Jesus. Lord, we hurt because she hurts, Lord God. We look at her husband, Lord God, and he's concerned, Lord God. Her children are too, Lord God. Give them peace, Father God, in the name of Jesus. But Lord, we know you are the God that healeth thee, Lord Jesus. And we just believe in you, Lord God, for a miracle, Lord God, that you touch the Lord. For each person in this room, Lord God, we're believing for a miracle, Lord God. A life-changing miracle, Lord God. Let it begin today, Lord Jesus. Let everybody that has come, Lord God, not return home the same, Lord. Give them more of a hunger and a thirst and a desire for your word. To read your word, to study your word, Lord God. To pray, to fast, Lord God. And to go forth and proclaim your word boldly, Father. And we thank you for it, Lord. We ask, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we came to worship you. We came to worship you, Father. We came to learn more of you, Father. And as we yield to you, Lord God, we ask that you empty us out even the more, Father, to receive more. That we may be able to give out to the, those that need you, Father. 
We're depending on you, Lord. And at any time we begin to look at ourselves and to begin to talk about ourselves, Lord, we'll quickly repent. This isn't about us. It's all about you. We're focusing in on you, Jesus. And we thank you today. We came to lift you up, Father. For you said you'll draw all men unto you, Lord God. If we lift you up from the earth. And we lift you up tonight, Lord. And when we go back, Lord God, and to lay down and rest. Let that prayer generator just turn, Lord God. All through this hotel, all through the night. All where the saints are staying, just let that prayer wheel turn, Lord God. Let that generator turn, Lord God. Let it turn, Jesus. Let that turbine just turn, just turn, just turn, just turn, Lord God. We came to hear from you, Lord. And we're going to beg you until we get what we came for. Deliverance is the children's bread. And we thank you, Jesus. And we call on you, Lord, because we know that you are real. You are real, Father. And we lift you up tonight, Lord. We praise you for everything, Lord God, that you've done for us. Even things, Lord God, we don't even realize that you've already done. Not until we slow down and get before you, you can show us what you've already done. You said not to be anxious for anything. But by only by prayer and supplication, Father. And we come before you tonight, Lord. And we reverence you, Lord. And we worship you and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. Give us the joy of the Lord tonight. Loose the spirit of dancing and praise and worship in this place. Loose your joy in this place in the hearts of the believer, Lord God. We need to experience that, Lord Jesus. We walk around sometimes all tight and bound and, Lord, not, not even knowing how to really enjoy you. Loose us tonight, Father. Loose us, Father. As we praise you, Lord, and as we open up, Lord God, our arms in surrender, we welcome you in, Father. And we thank you for it, Lord. And we rejoice in you, Father. We love you, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a praise offering in this place. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You're worthy to reign, Jesus. You're worthy to reign, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you're worthy to reign, Lord. We lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We will bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give somebody a hug in this place. Greet your brother and sister, the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a praise offering in this place. He is worthy. Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy. You're worthy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can you put that on? Hallelujah, you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We came to worship him yeah. and to praise his holy name. You, you know, you just don't start praising the Lord once you get to heaven. You got to start here. You got to know. You know what I mean? And I thank the Lord because he's been so good to me. I know he's been good to y'all too, right? Let the redeemed of the Lord what? Say so. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We're trusting you, Lord God, to rain down on us tonight. We're at our end, Lord God. We need your power, Lord Jesus. We need compelling power, Lord Jesus. We need a power, Lord God, that can saw through, Lord God, hell. Down in a person's soul, Lord God. is magnified, Lord God, and is strengthened and emboldened, Lord God. With the devil himself, Lord God. Lord, we need your power, Lord. And we need to see it demonstrated, Lord God, in this earth. You are the only hope, Lord Jesus. You're the only hope, Father. Rain down on us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, rain down on us, Lord. We yield to you, Father. We yield to you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Karirobo Sandi Robo Kondala Basaya. Yerobo Kondala Basandi Robo Kosatala Bondala Kaya Rosia. Hiri Robo Kondala Basandi Robo Kondala Basaya. Hari Raki Robo Sandi Robo Kondala Basande. Hiri Robo Kondala Basandi Robo Kondala Basandi Raki Robonda. Hiri robo ko ya rasiki robo ndala ba ya rasiki robo sanda. Hari robo ko ndala ba sandi ya robo ko ya rasia. Hiri robo ko ndala ba sandi ya robo ko ya rasiki robo sanda. Hiri robo ko ndala ba sandi ya robo ko ya rasia. Hiri robo ko ya rasia. Hari robo ko ya rasia. Rain down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We, we want you, you to Jesus. be here, Jesus. We want you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord. We glory in you, Jesus. We ask you, Lord God, bring forth your spirit, Lord God. Pour it out tonight, Lord God. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you know what he's asking you for, Lord Jesus. Meet him. Meet him. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We curse every satanic force, principality, power, ruler of darkness and spiritual wickedness, Lord God, in high places. Oh, Lord, break every yoke, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Unbind the mind, Lord, the soul, Lord God, the heart, Lord God, to believe you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Stir up, Lord God, the gift that's down in him, Lord. Stir him up, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Stir it up, Lord God, in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, don't let him return the same, Father God. Holy boldness, Lord God, to proclaim the gospel everywhere he goes, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for it, Father. The anointing, Lord God, to rest on his life, to break every yoke, Lord God.
in the name of Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. This is the day, Lord God, that you have made, Lord. We will rejoice in it and be glad, Lord. Everywhere we go, Lord God, we call on your holy name, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for Brother Gary, Lord God. Strengthen him in a mighty way, Lord God. Clear out his mind, Lord God. Give him a mind of the Lord, Lord God. The same spirit Issachar's race had, Lord Jesus. That studied diligently your word, Lord God, and knew your precepts and lived for you, Lord God, holy. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Sharpen his mind, Lord God, and his mental faculties, Lord God. To be able to worship you, Lord Jesus. We bind every satanic force and principality and power and rule of darkness, Lord God, and spiritual wickedness, Lord, that will try to bind them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for your power and your authority, Lord Jesus, right now, Lord. Break every yoke right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We glory in you, Lord. We lift you up, Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, a new work, Lord God, a new man, Lord Jesus. A heart to believe you, Lord God, and to rejoice in you, Lord. Freely, Lord God, liberty in the spirit, Lord Jesus. Oh, liberty in the spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we praise you today for our sister, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, give up refreshing of the Holy Ghost, Lord God. Baptize again and again and again and again, Lord Jesus. Set on fire, Lord God. Lord God, when she hit her house, Lord God, hit that door, Lord God. Let them see, Lord God, it's a new creature in you, Lord God. And everywhere she go, Lord God, let them tell her about you, Lord God. Tell them about you, Lord God, in boldness, Lord God. Not to shrink back no more, Lord God. But we're free to speak about you, Lord God, wherever she goes, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, stir up that gift, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Stir it up, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. More, Lord God. More power, Lord God. More love, Lord God. More power, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. More power, more love, Lord God. We curse every satanic force, Lord God. They want to keep a bound to this world, but devil, you're a liar. Loose her, Lord God, and use her, Lord God, for your honor and your glory, Lord. We curse every devil, Lord God. They want to keep a bound, Lord God, but we reverse every curse. We reverse every incantation, every vex, every hex. Every soul is prayer and every psychic prayer. We curse it in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we ask that you ignite her, Lord God. Ignite a flame of fire, Lord. Flame of fire, Lord. Flame of fire, Lord. Flame of fire, Lord. Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Get out of here, devil. No more. No more power will you have over the saints in the name of Jesus. No more. Victory belonging to us. No more. No more glory in you, devil. Resurrection life come forth. Resurrection life come forth in the name of Jesus. Come forth in the name of Jesus. Come forth in the name of Jesus. Break loose, Lord God. Loose the Lord Jesus. Lord, everywhere she go, Lord God. Well up on spring of life, well up in his belly. A churning turbine, a churning turbine. Never to stop, Lord God. Praying, calling on you, Lord God, with a heart, Lord God. For you, Lord Jesus, after your heart, Lord. A man and a soul, Lord God, that longs after you, Lord Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's time to go, Brother Jerry. It's time to go. Father, we thank you for him, Lord God. Fill him and send him, 
Lord Jesus. Fill him and send him, Lord God. Fill him and send him, Lord God, with the precious Holy Ghost. Lord God, let those hands, Lord God, when they touch, Lord God, let the rivers of living life flow through them, Lord God. A well, Lord God, dug down deep. A well dug down deep, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Let him go, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let him go in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help! Help! Lord, let him go, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Out of the bowels, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Help! 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 Come up out of there in Jesus' name. Help! Help! He came to get free, devil. He done told on y'all on the fast. He been praying and asking God and telling him about you. Now it's time for you to go in Jesus' name. Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Oh, devil, you thought you had your one, didn't you? You thought you had your one. I curse you. I curse you at the root. All oh, witchcraft, sorceries, divinations, spells, vexes, hexes, soulless prayers. I command you to loose her right now in the name of Jesus. Let her go in Jesus' name. Let her go in Jesus' name. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Let your life flow, flow through it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Robo Kondo, Robo Sandy, Robo Ko. Yarobo Kondi, Robo Sandy, Robo Ko, Satarabo, Dele, Rasia. Hiria Robo Kondo, Robo Sandy, Robo Ko, Sandy, Rakia, Rosia. Only a Rakia, Robo Sandy, Robo Kondo, Robo Sandy. We curse the spirit of fear. Fear, we put you on notice in every soul in this place. We put you on notice, fear, in the name of Jesus. Fear the unknown. Fear the Holy Ghost. Fear to be alone at night in your home. Fear the devil going to come in on me and kill me. Fear death. We curse you in the name of Jesus. We curse you in the name of Jesus. God is not going to answer my prayer. I'm scared he ain't going to answer my prayer. We curse you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go down deep, Lord. Go down deep, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We curse the spirits of fear, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Fear to proclaim the gospel on the streets. Fear will get fired from my job. Fear I'm not going to be able to pay that house note if I say something. I curse you in the name of Jesus. I curse you in the name of Almighty God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I break your yoke in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We curse the spirits of fear. Fear has torment. It'll keep you back from studying the Word of God. It'll keep you back from praying alone. 
It'll make you afraid to walk around in your own house. Make you afraid I'm going to get killed on the highway. Somebody going to run into me. I curse it in the name of Jesus. Fear flying. I curse it in the name of Jesus. We curse you, devil, in the name of Jesus. We curse the spirits of fear, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. We bind it in the name of Jesus. You said whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. And Father, I ask that you loose the spirit of fear in this name of Jesus. Loose the spirit of fear in this place. And then bind the spirit of faith to your children, Lord God. To believe you, Lord God, the impossible, Lord Jesus. The impossible, Lord God, to be able to believe you, Lord God. The gift of faith, Lord God, let it resound in your church, Lord God. To believe you, Lord Jesus. To believe you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you can do anything, Lord God. Anything, Lord God, you can heal, Lord God. You can restore marriages, Lord God. You can deliver, Lord God. You can baptize us in the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you today, Jesus. You can do anything, Lord Jesus. Whatever we need, you can do it, Father. You can give us a sound mind, Lord God, where we don't have to take any more antidepressant drugs, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You can do that, Lord. You can do that, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. You can run the devil out of our children, Lord God. You can do that, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We believe you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, tonight, Father. Lord, we rejoice in you tonight, Lord God. We thank you for joy unspeakable joy father god we thank you lord god for your joy jesus we thank you lord and we rejoice in you tonight lord god father we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory it belongs to you lord jesus it belongs to you let us praise him hallelujah it belongs to the lord hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah lord Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, Jesus! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Praise you, Jesus! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Jesus! Father, we praise you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pass the price. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, right now, Lord. Open our hearts to receive your word. Father, and we rejoice in you right now, Lord God. We thank you for everything that you will do here this weekend, Lord God. We yield to you, Lord. We want to stay yielded to you, Lord. No more listening to the world, Lord God. Let this weekend be a time, Lord God, a shut away from the world, Lord God, and a lock in with you, Jesus, to meditate on you, Lord God, to stay up tonight, Lord, and to just to bask in your word, Lord God, and to pray and in a seed, Lord Jesus. Just keep that turbine just flowing through this place, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask and we pray. Hallelujah. Ask that, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. I know y'all been traveling all day, so we're not going to be late tonight. We're going to um, dismiss in about 20 minutes. But want to kind of set the tone for the conference this year. Since we're getting started on Thursday, we added an extra day. 
so we can kind of cover some topics that are germane to what's going on down here right now because there's a lot of stuff going on. And I believe God is transitioning over to another phase of, of the church and its existence. It's evident that we can't stay right here as the church body universal because there's nothing getting done where we are. We gotta move to another place. I mean, you can't keep going to church services, going to Wednesday night Bible study, going to conferences and outreaches and evangelistic meetings and all that stuff we do, but it's evident nothing is happening. I mean, this, I mean, before you can get something done, you gotta come to terms with reality. It's a dead, dried up river Amen. with religious people going through what they've been taught to do, nothing happening, nothing, nothing is transpiring, and we got to come to terms with it. So we want to kind of set the tone for the conference tonight so we'll get ready for a Friday and Saturday and Sunday as it comes along. And the overriding theme is church order. The church has to return back to proper order for God to move. God will not move through what he didn't create. You gotta let that sink in. <laughs> I mean, if he didn't make it, why would he use it? Functionality is important. Whatever God created, he'll, cause, he'll co sign on it and move through what he made. But if you take something and try to put it before God and tell God to use it, and he didn't make it, he's not gonna do it. So what we have is a whole bunch of religious stuff that God didn't make, so we see no power. I'm going to talk about something real fast tonight that everybody should come to terms with, in my opinion. And it's not really my opinion, I think it's a fact. But uh, before we do, let's play our usual giveaway game. We always like to uh, mix in a little bit of fun with the meetings here. And tonight we're giving away four of these. I got about 15 of these with me to, uh, throughout the meeting. Seven inch touch screen tablets. These things are nice, man. High definition display. Seven inch touch screen tablets. These will come in handy on your job during lunchtime want to read the Bible or something. You can just go on to your Bible on this and just, uh, you know. It, everything we do is designed to enhance your spiritual life. So, you know, if you can get something that you can use, lightweight, you know, you can go to the lunch room or whatever or the break room on your job, and you can read the Bible in any version you wish to read it in. So that's a good deal. So we're going to ask you our usual Bible trivia questions here. And I'll recognize you because, you know, more than one of you will probably answer this because we probably have some people that read the Bible in here probably. <laughs> you know, a gathering of Christians, but no one reads the Bible. That's kind of messed up, man. <laughs> but you know you have that too now people go to church and never read the Bible so you can basically tell them anything but we're gonna uh, do this little quiz real fast and uh, I'll just don't yell out the answer I'll point to you to give the answer and then if you get it right you'll win one of these touch screens these are nice man real nice maybe I should keep one for <laughs> okay let's do this <clears throat> First question, in Revelation, what color were the four horses of the apocalypse? Let me get somebody that's not usual. Let me try, try her. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, that's good. They usually call it pale, but it is a pale green. That's right. Okay, good. There you go. All right, next question. Isaiah 53, 5 says that Jesus was wounded for what? Boy, everybody knows that one. Golly. All right, Josie. Oh, Josie, don't be trying to get all happy jumping on me. Here, girl, here. <laughs> Josie. I've been knowing Josie a long time. How long have I been knowing you? <laughs> in 1 Kings 17 Elijah raised a widow's son from the dead 
Where did that widow come from? Let's get somebody not a usual suspect here. Right here. Zarephath. Zarephath. Exactly. Okay, good. <laughs> the widow of Zarephath. That's not a that's not a known one, right? That's a, that's, that's that's one that you know. You gotta have to really read it to know that one. Okay, Jeroboam established idolatrous worship in what two sites in the Bible? Jeroboam established idolatrous worship in what two sites? No, Shonda Iron, not you. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid the Atlanta people if I can. Jeroboam, idolatrous worship in two sites, what were they? I taught this right here. If you listen to the message, you should have heard this. All right, Shonda Irons, where? Dan and Bethel, correct. How about you weren't won something before here, girl? <laughs> you see, when you come to these conferences, it pays to have read your Bible. You know, you need to just read your Bible, man. You could be winning stuff. What if we gave a million dollars away one night or something? You never know. You know, I should have read. I wish I had a, see all that wish I had a stuff? It becomes detrimental to you. <laughs> All right. Let's get into what we're talking about real fast. Uh, we're broadcasting by way of live stream. Hello to everybody on live stream. Of course, this service tonight is running from now until 10 o'clock. It's about 20 minutes to 10. We're going to cut it short because people need to get some rest. And that's why we add the day because you can rest this day. And now you've got Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in front of you. Because that travel day is usually rough. You know what I'm saying? So we got this one that we can kind of get you to rest on, and then we start up in the morning. The, tomorrow morning, the service is at 10 a.m., and then uh, it's running from 10 to 2, and then, of course, the lunch-in is was scheduled for now the covered outdoor facility. The lunch, the dinner tonight was scheduled for that also, but it's a rain forecast in the, uh, in the makings down here, so we're going to be looking at the rain and how it looks tomorrow. The rain is on the schedule for tomorrow. We'll be back in this room again over here that we were in tonight. Well, that's uh, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Praise and worship service will begin. And then again, 10 o'clock Saturday morning. And, a, and a, of course, the cookout was scheduled on the beach. But again, that's subject to rain. I think it's 90% chance of rain on Saturday. So it's way out there. And Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 p.m., followed by farewell brunch and buffet. Also in this hallway, adjacent to this room, it's a hallway, you walk around into the hallway. The first door on the right is suite number 131, that's the hospitality suite. So anything you wanna eat throughout the day, fellowship, you know, just hang out, goof off, play games, whatever. The hospitality suite is right in this same building, right next door in this corridor, door the first room on the right, suite 131 is the hospitality suite. And that will be stocked with all kind of goodies and stuff. So you, you don't really have to cook. You don't have to pay for any food down here. We're trying to handle all of that so it's not a, a, a burden on you, especially if you got kids, because kids can eat. <laughs> Little bitty kids can put some food away, man. Okay, let's see. Any other thing I'm forgetting here? Oh, yeah, one other thing. We're in the initial phases of, of planning a marriage retreat back down here later this year. So also, uh, we're going to be looking for people interested in a marriage retreat. And what we might be planning on doing with this is like a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we're going to wrap around that marriage retreat a men's and women's fellowship. So basically, it would be a breakout session, session for the men and women in fellowship. So that's, you don't have to be married to go to that. And then in the midst of that, a marriage retreat also for just couples to kind of deal with some couple stuff whether you're married or engaged, you know, because a lot of times married people can help engage people. You know, I wish I had had somebody to tell me all the things I need to know before I got married, but most of us learn the hard way. You know, nobody told us anything, and we're out in the middle of this. You know, you could, you could have avoided a lot of stuff if somebody would had just told you something, man. But uh, that's what we try to do from now on. When young people get engaged, they need to have counseling and they have older heads, people who've been through the trenches, to talk to them about what they're going to encounter. Because you cannot mesh two souls together into one 
and not to pick up what? Friction. You know, you're not gonna make two people into one just presto change or by magic and you become one person. You're gonna pick up friction. Cause people gotta change, you gotta adapt, and, and the most important thing, you gotta give up the self life. The way you mesh together two people is both people have to give up, give up the self life. And the marriage covenant entails a lot when we stood before those preachers and, and said those vows, we really didn't know what we were getting into. So that stuff sounded good when you were saying it, but you didn't know that that stuff was real, man. <laughs> you know, you, you pledge in a covenant relationship to be married to somebody, it's hard to break a covenant before God. That's why, you know, people don't talk too much about marriage and divorce in the church anymore. But very few people are authorized to be divorced in God's economy. Did you know that? It's a covenant. It's a blood covenant that has been cut. And you can't disavow a blood covenant just because you don't feel like it. I don't care what they say about irreconcilable differences. You better reconcile under God's auspices because, uh, you know, I got tired of this car, so I'm trading it in in God. You know, I found a younger version of my car. And I'm going to trade in this one for another one. No, man. It's a whole lot of church folk living in what? Adultery. See, that's, that's not addressed too much. There are instances God will authorize divorce. But that's a thing that God does himself, and nobody can tell you what to do in situations because it's a rare thing in church when you've been saved that God begins to authorize divorce. You know, most times he's going to tell you, you can depart, but you better remain unmarried. It's hardcore. It's real. Because in our nation, we don't understand covenant. Blood covenants are real. They're not easily broken. See, we, we living in this rebellious, cavalier society where everything is just easily entreated, but it's not that way with God. We're in another kingdom ruled over by another king that has nothing to do with time and space and what we're used to. So you got to learn these things. You got to understand what a blood covenant is and what it does to you. A blood covenant is a binding covenant unto death. And we got to examine that. We're going to talk about that a little bit in this conference about what the covenant is in marriage, what the covenant is in church, you know, church. A fellowship is a covenant cut between other believers and yourself. That you're in a blood covenant with whoever you fellowship. You can't just dissolve and, and, and disfellowship yourself from the saints. It's a blood covenant because you came under the blood of Jesus into one body and you became a family member. And you have responsibilities to each other in the body of Christ. He says, by this, how will, how will unbelievers and sinners know that we are really saints? Because of the love we have one for the other. And that's all about selflessness. There is no selfishness in Christ. It's a selfless life. I mean, stuff we do, I mean, standing up here and talking is easy. But all this equipment moving and all these books and tapes moving and all these guys that set up all this stuff, the singers and all of that, that's all a selfless thing that nobody knows about. It's easy standing here and talking, but all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes takes selfless people who look for no accommodation, look for no, no adulations, no worship, nobody knowing what they're doing. You have to do it as unto the Lord. And, and the Lord who sees you even praying secretly does what? He rewards you openly. That's how you got to walk this thing out, man. It's all about Jesus Christ now because as the church turns over, into a, into a whole new arena, when Jesus Christ really raises up his real church, it's going to be so diametrically opposed to what you thought the church was, it's going to be a shocking experience to see God really do what he's going to do. We've never seen the church in our generation. Never. You have, you've never gone to church. You've never seen church. You have no idea what church looks like. We've been in religious structure thinking it's God on the move. But God's about to what? Deconstruct that within the inner man and reconstruct the kingdom of God in us. That prayer about let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, you better examine how the kingdom is in heaven now. If it's going to come to earth like it is in heaven, what's the kingdom really like? 
<coughs> and, for, and remember, it doesn't come with observation. It's within you. It's going to be radical, and it's going to be some changes made, and we've got to get ready for these changes. All right, tonight we're going to talk about, first of all, we're talking about the purpose for this gathering. The purpose for this gathering is very simple. I think last year we had about 200 people, and it's around 110 this year. And you got varied reasons why people don't come. A lot of people still, you know, in school and got things going on. There's a lot of stuff going on out there. But we don't monitor numbers. We monitor spiritual content. See, it doesn't matter if you got a bunch of folks. You want spiritual essence. You want spiritual content in play. Whether well, people really are sincere, they're seeking God at all costs, and they want to see God's kingdom come. It's all we're interested in because wherever that kingdom breaks out, everything else happens by itself. So now, most of the time when you follow numbers, you're following a delusion. It'll be 80,000 people in Dallas down at the Mega Fest to see Steve Harvey telling jokes. And folks will believe that's the church. It can't be the church. So, you know, don't follow numbers. You have to seek the Lord in, within the inner man to be changed into his image to know what the body of Christ really is and to appreciate when God manifests himself and his word to you. If you've been around as long as I have, and some of you have been around as long as me or longer, and some of you are having a quick work done on you. In other words, you might have been saved for six years, but God is doing a, a quick work on you because we don't have time. So he's cutting down the time it takes to change somebody. He says, I'll cut this thing short in righteousness. So when you talk about somebody's maturity level, it's not about years of existence. It's about how fast they allow God to do the work on them. And so that's all about a made-up mind, discipline, focus. You know, all the things we don't like is what it takes to be changed. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's easy to be fat. You know it's easy to be fat. It's hard to be slim. <laughs> Have you noticed that? That everything that is easy to do is detrimental to you. But the hard stuff will benefit you. So God will work on you if you draw nigh to him. The law of reciprocity says he'll draw nigh to you. If you seek him, you'll find him when you do what? Search for him with all of your heart. See, it's a thing of reciprocity in God. God responds to people who respond to him. If you seek him heavy, he's going he to draw near to you. Now you got to be ready for God when he comes because he's not a human. Did you realize, you realize God is not a human, right? Jesus became a man, but Jesus wasn't always a man. So you're dealing with an extraterrestrial being who is above this physical plane. And when he comes near to you, you have to have a refabricated soul to accommodate him. Because God is not like us. He says he doesn't think like us. His thoughts are higher than, our, than ours. And his ways are higher than ours. So you've got to be reconstituted in the inner man to deal with God. Because, because God is not like me and you. Never take anything for granted dealing with God. Don't, when people talk, I know the Lord, you better be careful about I, I know the Lord stuff because God is not like us. We got to change dramatically to know God. It takes a total transformation of the mind to interact with God. So what's the focus of this gathering? To change your perspective concerning the order and operation of the church. So I'm telling you the goal before we start. Our goal is to change your perspective concerning the order and the operation of the church. Whatever you think the church is, you've got to data dump it. You know how hard that is to do? Did that sound this simple, didn't it? What I'm about to undertake is hard. Because whatever you've been programmed to believe is in you as a belief system, and it's hard to data dump ingrained belief systems. So now we've got to take on the challenge of reprogramming the soul to accept what Jesus really is like as compared to what we thought it was like. Now, see, most of us in here have some type of a predetermined evaluation of what Jesus is like. As I'm talking, you already know Jesus as far as you're concerned. Now, either I'm crazy or I'm right. It's going to be that dramatic. I'm going to be absolutely wrong or absolutely right. That's scary, ain't it? <laughs> That's scary. That you're going to be involved in something that will be absolutely wrong 
or absolutely right. Golly. Then he said, well, what if he's wrong? <laughs> and I believe it. I'll be damned following this fool. <laughs> we got to go back, man. I'm going to show you, hopefully, in these lessons over the next few days, how most of us compromise the gospel thinking we're showing love to the brothers. We don't judge anything, and that's the devil getting a free pass. We've been duped. I'm telling you, we've been duped. You listen to most people, and you'll get a place where they won't go. Now, I don't care how hard they preach, you'll get a place, in the, and you, you, if you hear the beard wall. And I've been, I set up a lot, I set up under a lot of people in my life. Derek Prince, an astute Bible expositor, one of the best teachers in the world, until you get to Roman Catholicism. The brakes come on full blast. He won't, he won't touch it. Jacob Prash, great Bible expositor, Hebrew, Greek scholar, knows several languages, smart guy. Until you get to Christians having demons. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, uh, no, Christians can't help. No, that's. You listen to Charles Stanley, John MacArthur. Once saved, always saved, was birthed in hell. They believe it. You see, as you touch on these things that have become idolatrous in their nature, you know what you're hitting up against? Golden calves. You hit golden calves. See, what I'm desiring to see happen, and what you, sh you should want to see happen too, is you want to see the power of God on display. No more religious stuff. You want to see God do something. The quest should be God doing something. I'm, I'm going to show you something in a minute about what I'm saying that really defines where I'm coming from. But right now, is Vinny in here? Did Vinny go back upstairs? He outside? Oh, he went back up? Maisha traveled here today, been battling cancer for the last, what, two or three years? Almost 10 years? And see, I'm, I'm not playing about her having cancer. I, I don't like the fact she has cancer. It's a personal affrontery to me that she's sick. You know, Maisha does a lot of things. You know, if you, if you know all the stuff Maisha can do and what she has done, it, it would amaze most people. Most of y'all interacted with Maisha through her blog. She's very smart, very well written, very well spoken. She's, she's good. And she's a good person. So that's a personal affrontery to me that she has cancer. And I don't like looking at the Bible talking about healing and a person not getting healed. I don't like that. See, you, sh you should get something in you that you make this thing personal. You got to assault God with this thing about, hey, look, something's not adding up here and we're missing something. So if God is the same and he says he's the same, what? Yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord thy God, I change not. Something is wrong. So you got to put the brakes on, hold it, and step outside of that train, which is religion, and reevaluate where you're coming from and where you're going and what you're in. Don't just keep doing stuff. Look, it's enough teaching of the Bible. It's enough Bible studies and preaching and outreaches. All that stuff is just a lot of billowing smoke with no fire. We got to hold up, man, and hold it. We got to reconstruct what's right. I'm going to show you over the next three days why the power is cut off and what we got to do to kind of cut it back on again. It's going to shock some of you. Some of you are going to have to look at your family members that are church leaders and know they're wrong. Yes, you got to reevaluate everything. I'm talking about if you really want the real deal. I told my brother-in-law about a year ago, his mother, which is my sister's mother-in-law, is pastoring the church. I said, listen, man, y'all going over there with your mama and got your whole family over there with her. Your mama can't pastor a church according to the scripture. First Timothy chapter 3 says, you must be 
the husband of one wife. You know what he told me? Gary, I know you're right, but I can't hurt my mom. I said, listen, let me, let me ask you a question. Man. You see your mama go to hell, not to hurt her feelings and go against the Bible? I just can't do it, Gary. I can't do it. That's where we're at for real now. You, the, before you say wow and shake your head, no. That's where most people sit. They will not confront wrong, even if it's, if, if it's diametrically opposed to the Bible because of how somebody feels. I've become immune to my feelings. For real, I don't care how people feel. Is it true? Is it the word of God? We've been downgrading the Bible for the last 50 years to accommodate folks' feelings. Somebody's right and somebody's wrong. And we got to step outside of this religious matrix and make the hard choices necessary to save souls. Hell is real. Hell is hot. And hell is forever. Think about somebody going to hell forever. I can't even process it. A trillion years, 10 trillion years, 100 trillion years, and you're still there. The Bible says where the worm never dies, where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's the description of the Bible. And we in a cavalier fashion are trying to feel all this stuff emotionally and let a person drop off into hell. You have shaken the hands of people that are in hell tonight. Some of your family members are in hell tonight because nobody had the guts to confront what was wrong. We got to stop this, man, because we're going to be guilty before God of not confronting what was false and standing in the gap for real and being ambassadors from heaven to interdict this study flow into hell. This is real, man. This is real time, real business. And you got to be willing to step outside of the devil's filth and its gutter rot to be a different kind of a person now. And that's what I'm going to deal with this whole meeting. And it's going to be raw. It's going to be in your face. It might cut you up. But, you know, there's healing, there's healing balm and all that in Gilead, he says. You know. <laughs> You know, we, we can cut you up and maim you. God will fix you up later. You know, we ain't got time to patch you up here. Go home and get patched up. I'll cut you all up and dice you up real good, and God can fix you up later. But we got to get, we got to get for real about this. I mean, look, this is serious business now. Can't you see these people losing their minds? I don't care where you came from in here. You came from a bastion of folks that have lost their minds, and you know it. Some of your own relatives, you know they're crazy. I'm talking about asylum level crazy. I mean, let's, I mean, I'm dead serious. So we got to be dead serious about what we're doing now, for real. So let me turn on this recording device here. That was just a precursor. That wasn't even a message. I was just... And we'll talk about something real fast. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of sharing. Thank you for the word of God. God, take these words, make them alive to the hearers. Move us on, God, down the road into a new paradigm that we can actually walk in the spirit, not fulfill the lust of our flesh, and see you move in a supernatural way to save these souls from certain disaster. God, give us the confidence and the power to stand like never before. This is a new day. It's an awakening, and we need the power of God at our disposal. God, do a work that will cause the ears of the unbeliever to tingle in jesus name i pray amen so what's the purpose of the gathering we said to change your perspective concerning the order and operation of the church that's the number one objective we've got to change our view of the church the church as we have known and what we've been taught about it is all wrong it's skewed it's been perverted and the devil was able to come in in a stealth fashion to make us believe a lie, and he took advantage of us because we were not standing against the lie. You need watchmen on the wall to stand against the invaders when they come in. If you don't have any watchmen, you have no, no way to stop him. 
Somebody's got to watch when the devil makes his move to warn the people. So we're going to change your perspective concerning the order and operation of the church. Second thing, we're going to solicit your participation as a change agent. We're going to solicit your personal participation as a change agent. Actively putting your life on the line for Christ. Actively saying, look, it's a life or death situation. I'll put my life on the line for this. I'm willing to die for it. Where does that come from? It comes from the book of Revelation chapter 12. Let's take a look at it. Revelation 12, you don't have your Bible. We're going to hit just a couple of scriptures real fast. Revelation 12, verse 7, he says this. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. There was a war in heaven. Michael and his host of angels fought against the dragon and his angels. So you can see now in this metaphysical world, in this, in this realm outside of time and space, there is this celestial war going on. These entities are real. These are living beings at war. I don't know what angels use for weapons. It's not something that's tangible. There's some kind of an esoteric weaponry being used, but it's outside of time and space. He says, and referring to Michael, he prevailed. Well, the, the dragon prevailed not, neither was their, their place found anymore in heaven. So the war was fought between Michael and his angel and the dragon and his angel, and you know the dragon is Satan, and Satan's place was no longer found in heaven. So this is a casting down of Satan from heaven to earth. Now right now, Satan is not on earth. His, his kingdom is in the second heavens. It's in the second heavens above the earth. So there's going to come a time when God is going to dispatch Michael and his warring angels against the dragon and cast him down to earth level. Now this all follows a sequence in the Bible if you take note. Now watch this. <clears throat> his place wasn't found anymore in, in heaven, referring to the dragon and his angels. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which de deceives the whole world. Note now, he's deceiving the whole world. That's leaving nothing out. The whole world is deceived by Satan. So don't put confidence in anything in this world because it's all under the auspices of the God of this world who has deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. So you see now, he's now cast from the heavenlies, I told you, to earth. The Bible backs it up. And his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the powers of his Christ for the accuser of our brothers is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and this the part folk don't like. This is why I'm telling you you got to put your life on the line for this. And they love not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice you heavens and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he hath but a short time. Now this is, we're going to jump off this whole conference right here on that scripture. Now let's, let's look at the real sequence that's happening. The saints finally turn to only the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they had no self-consciousness so they loved not their lives unto death. That's a new breed of saint. That's a new kind of saint right there now. No self-consciousness, no love for your life, depending only on the blood and the words of your testimony. Now as a result of that, what happens? You just empowered Michael the archangel and his angels to confront the dragon 
because of what you said and because of what you became. That's why the war broke out. We initiated that war because the Bible says we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. What are we accomplishing now? The Bible says Jesus Christ was commanded by God the Father to sit right here at my right hand until I make your enemies what? And he can't make his enemies Jesus' footstool until the church has the devil under our feet. You see the picture? Until we cast him down under us, he'll rule over us. That's what he's doing right now. He has incorporated himself in religion, made up a pseudo Christ according to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. There's another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit. They got the wrong Jesus. Roman Catholicism ain't got the right Jesus. T.D. Jakes ain't worshiping the same Jesus you do. Joel Osteen's got the wrong Jesus. Charles Stanley with once saved, always saved, got a false Jesus. I'm telling you, you got, a new, got to be a new breed of Christian now, buddy. Look at all the stuff I just named that's an idol to millions of people. I just named about 100 million people right there, naming four guys. Look how wrong it is. Look how far-fetched church is from what God says it is. Another Jesus preaching another gospel and they receive what? Another spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit. It's a false spirit. And remember, the candle illuminates the showbread. If you got the wrong spirit, you know what's going to happen to you? Think about what I'm saying now. If you got a false Holy Spirit and the candle illuminates the showbread, what's going to happen to you? But what's going to happen to you, though? But no, notice now, now, now look at the paradigm. The candlestick in the tabernacle illuminates the showbread. So if you got the wrong spirit, what's going to happen to you? Think about it. Logically analyze it. Huh? What'd you say? Huh? You'll be exposed. Think about it now. The candle illuminates the showbread. Huh? You're going to read the Bible perverted because the wrong spirit is illuminating the showbread. The showbread is the word of God. You're going to read into the Bible what it did not say or you're going to extract from the Bible what it did say. You're going to take away from it. The Pharisees, Jesus accosted them because they did what? They added to the Bible. They added what? The traditions of their fathers and the oral law. The Torah. They added that stuff to the Bible. You got all kinds of stuff like the Talmud and all these different interpretations. That's adding to the Bible because they had a wrong spirit. The Sadducees took away from the Bible. They didn't believe in the resurrection and things of that nature. They took from the Bible what it said. The Pharisees were closer to the truth than the, than the Sadducees were. That's why Jesus stayed on the Pharisees so hard. But look what's happening. Folks are sitting under folks, receiving the wrong spirit, and Creflo got them believing that prosperity is a doctrine. And the Bible said to be content with such things as you have. So they go to church, shacking up with their boyfriend, paying a tithe, trying to get blessed. You got a demon spirit in you. Now, how many folk are really willing to set in the battle for real with God? Who's going to really stand with God really in a warfare against this adversary for real and stop playing church? Stop compromising what's true, trying to go alone to get along. Joseph will tell you, I've been like this for a long time. <laughs> she used to be the church secretary when we went we to church. She'll tell you the stuff I got into over there. Because something is wrong. 
Something is wrong. I've been saying this for 30 years. Something is wrong. If you don't see the power of God on display, something is wrong. And we got to begin to examine ourselves to see what? If we be in the faith. I'm not going to hell behind the wrong stuff. Terry didn't get into this to go to hell. I'm not going to church to go to hell. That's crazy. We got to get some guts. Good old-fashioned guts. Gonads. See, men and women have gonads. And men, they're scrotums. And women, they're ovaries. You still got gonads. See, the baby formed into a man or a woman, scrotum in a boy, ovaries in a woman. It's, they look the same when they were first conceived, though. The boys just dropped, and the woman, the woman stayed up and became ovaries. You need gonads. What's the gonads identifying? Male and female. What's the devil creating? Transgenders and homosexuals. You see what I'm saying? You see how he crossed it up? The only one that can walk this out is a heterosexual man or woman. Everything else is perverse. That's why the devil's going to war against you with radical homosexuality. That's why they got Don Lemon on TV, Anderson Cooper, Shepard Smith, homosexuals representing them, even telling you the lies on the news. That's why Tyler Perry will be at the mega fest. Homosexual spirit. You can't see that homosexual spirit on Jake's. I'll run before I take it back. I ain't taking nothing back. Stop playing with this thing. Jesus is on his way back. He says when the son of God returns, shall he find faith on the earth? I'm not, I'm not going out like this. If you're in a room of 10 million people and they believe this is trash, you're the only one that's right. That's all it means. Forget the numbers. Look at the fruit. You will know them by their fruit. Who cares about TBN? Who cares about the word network? You will know them by their fruit. You can't get grapes from thorns. And you can't get figs from thistles. Thorns and thistles are cursed. That's why Jesus wore a crown of thorns. He went to the cross cursed. Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. We got to stop fooling around with this. We got to stop playing church. Somebody got to get the intestinal fortitude to stand up now in the midst of austere conditions and proclaim the truth. And in return, what do you get? An inferno. You're going to stoke the fire, but it's going to loose Micah the archangel and his angels against Satan and his angels to cast the devil down so that the devil becomes Jesus' footstool as the feet of the church are on top of his head. That's when Jesus will return for a church without spot nor blemish that was not afraid to represent him here. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. Conversely, if you represent him before men, he will represent you before his father. This is something that's real. It's actively happening right now, and it's not being delayed any longer. It's coming to pass. So we're going to get you to actively participate, those of you that will, in an activity that will put your life on the line. Because you find out real fast when you tell the truth, man, you're going to stir up a controversy. Yes, I mean, I'm sure you found that out, right? Yes, See, here what you got, here's what you got to process right now. You got to get this straight in your mind. You don't save people talking to people. You save people talking to God. See, we've, we've burned a lot of energy on the horizontal trying to save somebody looking across at them and telling them things about God. You don't save them like that. You save people getting as close to God as you can 
until you're transformed into the image of Christ, until the very Christ embeds you via the Holy Spirit, and God will save the person, not you. We try to save people. Let God save the people by, by becoming a vessel that carries God. That's where the flaw is. We're going back and forth on Facebook with somebody that's a heathen. You can't save them because they're crazy. But if you get some power and become a burning inferno inside with God's presence embedding you, God will tell you who to bypass and who to talk to because he's going to tell you not them, them. And you, you burn all the energy on them that won't hear it when that one right there will get saved. But because I'm trying to use my flesh to determine who to save on the horizontal, I'm missing God by a million miles. We've got to go vertical to allow God to fill us and then take your hands off of the ark. Everybody that touch, touches the ark dies. No human effort, no human ability, no human intellect, nothing from this world can be used and empowered to try to save somebody. Only Jesus can save. And no man can come to him unless the Holy Spirit draws them. We're burning a lot of religious energy because we have a perverted paradigm inside about the church. We've been trained and energized to try and do something. We've got to let the old man die to allow Christ to live through us and he will do the work in us. That's what it's all about. It's all about Christ coming alive at our expense. That's what we need to happen. What we got to do is we got to totally unplug our minds from this matrix. See, we'd be amazed that, that our minds are still plugged into this matrix. We, matrix, we just don't know it. It's something that's still there that can control, manipulate, emotional responses. If that thing can still bug you, it can still impact you. If the thing can still jerk you around, your mind is plugged into the matrix. It's got something on you. But when you really get free and you let that thing go and you're dead to it and it stops manipulating you and controlling you, then God can use you. Now, you remember the movie The Matrix, how Neo was plugged into the matrix with that hose plugged into the back of his head? And when they took that hose loose, it shocked his system because he was set free from computer virtual reality and then flooded into the real world from The Matrix. He lived in a pod hooked up to the computer, and he was a battery powered up, the, the, powered up by the computer. He was a battery used to power the computers. But to keep him there as a life force for the computer, he had to be plugged into a matrix in his mind. That's, man, that's so, it's such a good example of how the devil works. The devil takes our minds. Everything you've been through in life that led you to sin, it was achieved because the devil was able to get into your mind. A spirit is esoteric. It has nothing to it that's tangible. It's not material. So a spirit absorbs into you through what? A doorway. Some kind of a way the demons got to your mind and they began to now manipulate your thinking to make you believe in virtual things that are not real. It's a virtual reality. Now what they do is they construct another you. In other words, they put another you out in front of you and you become this other thing that you use to deal with people. So you got this thing out in front of you that you deal with life through. It's, it's filtering everything through it so you won't get hurt. They call them defense mechanisms. All these things you got not to be hurt and wounded. That's another you that you had to uh, construct so you can't take the blows of life. So the devil got into your mind and he began to create this virtual world. It was a world of sin that made you fit into the matrix. You see, sin plugged you into the matrix so you fit into it. You smoke the dope with your peers. You listen to the same music. 
You know how much stuff I try to deconstruct through messages because I know it's the matrix has got folk. A lot of young guys here had to be delivered from hip hop and rap in the church they thought it was valid. And the first thing they do in their minds is they try to justify it. You got to wrestle with it. <laughs> no, this is the Lord. This is the Holy Ghost. It's a ghost, but it ain't holy. See, you drag the dirt with you into church and you bring God what the Bible calls what? Strange fire. You take worldly stuff and put it on the altar and say, God, here, this is good enough. You're a bomb anyway. Let's take this junk here. It's good enough, I figure. As far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, it's good enough for you. No. The only thing God receives back into heaven is what he sent from heaven. He receives back to heaven what he sent from heaven. Jesus went back to heaven because Jesus came from heaven. So you got to give God what he desires, not what we desire. But you got to deconstruct the matrix in, in, in the mind. The matrix is always reinforced by demons. That's their job. They're the magicians of the matrix. You remember the magicians in Egypt that kept the Israelites bound, trying to stop them from leaving? That's the type of the demons, trying to keep you enslaved in Egypt. And all they do is refabricate themselves and reform up a religious vignette of themselves to operate in church. It's the same spirit but it transitions over to church so you won't pick up the fact that they're still there. You'll think it's really God, but it's just the demons, and, and they're now religious demons. So we got to deconstruct all of that in order to get to pay dirt so we can tap into the power. We got to hit pay dirt and get to the power because the power is what's going to set everybody free. Religion is that part of the devil's matrix that you and I have to overcome. There are many different segments of the matrix, but the one that we have to conquer, most of us here that are born again, is the religious matrix. That's where the devil set up camp with us. And so I gotta take on the challenge of finding out where the matrix may be plugged into you and to deconstruct that place. Because all of us have been exposed to religious stuff. The longer you, you've been in church, the more religious stuff you've been exposed to. Yes, sir. And see, we justify religious compromise by saying we love people. Did you know love, inspired by demons, is sin? You hold it, man. You, I, you hold it now. You telling me love is sin? See, demonically inspired love is emotion-based. Did you know that? That love is not an emotion? How many of y'all knew that? Now, you know that in your head. But most of us evaluate situations and relationships based on how somebody makes you feel. And how you feel about them. And you call that love. I was talking to a, a lady one day. She was talking about how much she loved this guy. And, you know, the guy was this and that. And she loved him and. You know, they were going to get married, and she loved them, and, you know, and the Lord this, and the Lord that, and the Lord this. And I said, um, you fornicating with the guy? Then you know how people, you know, pause, you know, like their mouth drop, I'm like. <laughs> like they can't believe you asked them that, you know what I'm saying? She said, well, yeah, but, you know, we're going to get married. I said, you don't love that guy. You hate that guy, it's good. Well, how can you say that? Fornication is damning the guy's soul to hell and you love him? You're damning his soul to hell and in the same breath you're telling him you love him. That's crazy. You don't love him. You love yourself. You're not committing sin with somebody damning their soul eternally and loving them. Love is not an emotion. Love is the presence of a being. God is is love. That's a radical transformation that has to take place in your psyche, your soul, and your spirit to finally process the fact that I don't have to feel anything to walk with God. God seeks after what? Obedience. If you love me, obey my commandments. You keep these commandments I give you. He didn't say one thing about you feeling anything. 
You know how much it takes for a human being to let that go? It's a lot of folks got what folks thought they loved them, and the person loved them. And what happened? Chaos and all hell broke loose. Because you find out one thing about your feelings. They can't be trusted, and they come and they go. What you're feeling right now, you might not be feeling tomorrow. You can't stay married lo a long time to somebody based on your feelings. Because sometimes you don't, you're not going to like them. <laughs> what? I'm just being honest. <laughs> sometimes they'll get on your last nerve. Some of y'all have been thinking about, I need to lead. I don't want to lead this drug <laughs> It gotta be a way out of this mess, you know. Why I married this clown, you know? <laughs> you can't, you can't do this based on your feelings because your feelings are going to change. You can get up, they say on the wrong side of the bed in the morning or whatever. You can get up not feeling like dealing with anybody that day. They say something to you. I wish they stopped talking to me. Just don't talk. Just, just go. Just. Why don't you find somewhere to go or something? See, it's going to be variations in how you feel, so you can't make your feelings the foundation for anything. You got to get a firm foundation. You got to get to Jesus, and the word of God is the foundation for everything. I don't feel like doing this a lot of days. I don't go on my feelings. I can be tired, sleepy, half dead, you keep doing what you're told to do. It's a discipline. Christianity is 99% a discipline. Did you not know that your mind, under the auspices of the word of God, can override anything you feel? Anything. It can override it. I don't care how bad you feel, how weak you feel, how tired you feel, how sleepy you feel, how mad you feel. The word of God can override anything in you. You got to yield to it. And let the Holy Ghost have its way because you don't have any personal, any personal uh, ulterior motives in, in what you're doing. You want God to be glorified at all costs. So the one thing I'll harp on as we wrap up tonight's little service here, as this introductory service is, the fact that Christians read all 65 books of the Bible. What? <laughs> what? What you laughing at? Did I say something wrong? What did I say wrong? See, some people didn't know that. <laughs> y'all better, better check your Bible knowledge, you know what I'm saying? It's 66 books in the Bible. But Christians read 65 books of the Bible. You know what book they leave out? Leave out? Huh? Acts. Why do they leave out Acts? Because that is the book that shows us what we should be like. Now, how many people are living in the book of Acts on a daily basis? Till they begin to make up doctrines to disavow the book of Acts. Tongues are not for today. The power went out with the apostles. That's because they can't live it. So they got to gotta find a way to disavow it and disempower it. When you read the book of Acts, if you're not living what Acts is displaying on a daily basis, you should feel two things. Dissatisfaction and disappointment. That should be down in your guts like, I'm not satisfied. I'm looking at Acts. I'm looking at me. And something is not right. Something ain't adding up. People being raised from the dead, the man at the gate called beautiful jumping up. The sorcerer is blind. The one with the spirit of divination, the spirit being cast out of her. 
Man, page after page after page of the book of Acts, the power of the Holy Ghost on display. And we get to the modern day, present day church and folks will back away from this message and get afraid of it because they don't want to go supernatural. I want to go to church, sing songs, get in the choir, and just go through the motions, but I don't want to come to terms with the fact that I personally have not arrived at the destination God has called me to get to. That's where you got to stop right there, sit down, shut your mouth, and reevaluate. I mean, let's be honest. These guys hit the street after the baptism and the Holy Ghost, and it was on. 3,000 people saved with one sermon. The Bible says, and God added to the church daily those that would be saved. This thing was a dynamo. It was a turbine spinning. This thing was an indestructible force that nobody could stop. But now, compromise, downgraded, emotion-centered gibberish. Folks evaluating rejection all day. And we're just so rejected and, you know, looking at what your mother did to you and what your father did to you and how you were hurt as a child. And Man, you could be in that junk forever. We need some folk to get healed up, filled up, and sent. We talk about doing them as tabernacle about here. We're not here to have church and theater style seating listening to messages. We're here to get you healed up, filled up, and sent. You don't have to go to church every Sunday. That's, where's that in the Bible? You should be on the battlefield. And you fellowship where you do, when you do, how you do, as the spirit sees fit. You can't let anybody put shackles on you. Now, here's where the danger comes in about what we're preaching. We're talking about absolute liberty in the church. Think about what I'm saying now. You got a church where you got the elders in place, the deacons in place, everything in place is operative, but the people are totally free. Did you not know God can't save people unless everybody in there has the opportunity to be damned? That your free will must never be impugned. You've got to be able not to be under control. The only admonition the Bible gives us about this is one statement. You are called unto liberty, only use not your liberty as an occasion for your flesh. That's all he said. You got to be free. But guess what? Most of us in this room have been programmed by religion to be bound. I guarantee it. I don't have to even go through the room. You got a bishop somewhere you yoked to. Some well, of y'all here scared now because your bishop might find out you came down here. <laughs> you about to have crazy. <laughs> somebody, somebody about to escape might be seen on live stream. That's why you're ducking behind your Bible so they won't see you on live stream. <laughs> this church stuff is crazy. Man, I talk to so many people every day that are totally bound thinking they're free. And they'll come to me with all kinds of stuff and I'm thinking, man, I don't even think about that stuff. I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, preacher, I know, you know, you're trying to get Dunamis Tabernacle going, and, you know, when the church gets rise, when it raises up, and I said, man, I don't care about no church. I don't care about no Dunamis Tabernacle. Well, I thought you were trying to, yeah, I am, and I care nothing about it whatsoever. That's crazy. Now, see, you crazy. What, you schizophrenic or something? Everything down here is temporal. You can do something, but not be all in it like that. It's not a big deal. Don't idolize anything. Just do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. The Holy Spirit will raise Lazarus from the dead today and tell you to forget it tomorrow morning. You don't glory in anything. See, that's why supernatural miracles are hard to come by. Because when people actually walk in supernatural power, they begin to idolize the power. And immediately, they go up the deep end. It happened to... Branham back in the day, Catherine Kuhlman, 
Benny Hinn. They idolized the power. Benny Hinn will come to this platform and not even open the Bible and start performing this spooky gibberish he's doing. He's throwing jackets on folks and stuff and knocking them out. <laughs> because people want to see a circus act. He confirms the word with signs following. You got to talk, man. You got to actually have something for the Holy Ghost to confirm. This ain't mysticism and magic. He's going to confirm whether or not what you said was true or not. We got to deconstruct a lot of things to get back to where the God of heaven wants us to be and then reconstruct what he wants. You got to have the foundation laid with the apostles' doctrine that set up elders and deacons in the church. The church has to be reconstructed as a family unit. That's what's missing. We've got wildfire burning everywhere, total chaos. Everybody's got a Bible open trying to teach somebody without having a foundation laid in them that's true. That's got to be done away with. You got to remain free, but at the same time, freedom is described in the Bible as wherever the Spirit of the Lord is. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's where the freedom is. Freedom is not some cavalier roller coaster running with no controls. It's where the Holy Ghost flows. That's where freedom is. Two more scriptures. Look at Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Wrap it up with these two scriptures in Galatians. And we'll get some rest for tonight. Galatians chapter 4, verse 21. This is these scriptures right here are very important. If you get a chance throughout this time we spend down here from now through Sunday, because I'm going to wrap it up and uh, center around the same scripture, but read the entire book of Galatians. There's only six, six uh, uh, chapters in the Galatians. But read the whole book of Galatians real slow or slowly, whichever is right. And we're going to wrap it up on Sunday, kind of kind of digging in Galatians real hard. But I'll just tell you this about it to begin with. Galatians is pointing out to us where the real yoke is on the present day church. Look at Galatians 4.21. Tell me, you that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who, who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which genders bondage, which is Agar, and I think we call it, her name was Hagar in the Old Testament. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, in answers to Jerusalem, which now is, which now is and is in bondage with her children. So, you know, the Jews and the uh, Arabians, you know, the Ishmaelites are all bound. You know, both of them are just bound, children of Abraham. Because the Jews rejected the Messiah, they're bound. And Ishmael was just a rebel, a wild man who wouldn't receive him anyway. And you see now, the devil is yoking together the remnant of the Jews that rejected Jesus. The Ishmaelites, who are the Muslims, and false Christianity, which is headed up by the Roman Catholic Church. And that's where Donald Trump went. He went from Riyadh, South Saudi Arabia, the home of the Muslims, the center, the center of the Muslim religion, Islamic religion. He went from Riyadh to Jerusalem, the center of Judaism, which is rabbinic Judaism, which is not valid. See, the rabbis came into operation after 70 AD so rabbinical Judaism is not the Judaism of the Bible. It's a counterfeit. So he went from the center of Islam to where the Jews had their central focus in Jerusalem. And then he went to the Vatican to meet with the Pope. He had the triune antichrist religions that he went to visit. So you see what's happening now. Every president elected in this country goes to the Vatican because the Pope is the high priest of the Roman Empire. And you must go pay homage to him, bow before his ring and kiss it, dress in black, 
to pay homage to the priest that offers the sacrifices for Rome. We live in the pit of hell and nobody even knows it. We're living in ancient paganism with a high priest in Rome, priests, nuns, sodomites, molesting kids like animals, and folks sit up in Roman Catholic churches paying homage to the devil every Sunday, and nobody has the guts to address it. That's why we need a new breed of Christian. Look at this. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that, that bears not, break forth and cry you that travail is not. For the desolate has many more children than she which, ha than she which has a husband. Now we, receive, we, now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as, then he, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecutes him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Let that drill down in you now. Let it drill down in you. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecutes him that was born after the spirit, capital S, even so it is now. Church folk without the Holy Ghost will persecute church folk with the Holy Ghost because they can't understand the ways of the spirit. You're pneumatically driven by the spirit and the carnal mind is the enemy against the spirit. Not subject to the law of God, the Bible says, and neither indeed can be in Romans chapter 8. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. If you want to serve God, we got to get rid of what in you? The son of the bondwoman. You got an Adamic fleshly slave that has to be deadened and cast out of you for the new man to live. And that old slave is hooked into the matrix somewhere. We've got to find out where the power is not flowing. If you're not seeing those gifts operative in you coming to full force, we got to find out where that slave woman's boy is and get rid of him. Because my job and the only job I have is to see the spirit flow with no resistance. That's it. When you hit that pay dirt, man, you're in. Because you're driven by the spirit now. There's nothing that can stop you. You become very detrimental to the devil. And guess what? Also, the devil draws real close to you. <laughs> see, the thing about this, you know, I, I found out a long time ago why most people won't come all the way into the spirit and walk with God. Because they don't want to live the life they'll have to live from that point on. Because, you know, you can't do nothing now. You might as well just stay in the house and just. <laughs> you might as well just stay in the house in your room. Because the devil's going to be what? Sifting you every day. If you are tearing up his kingdom, guess what he's going to do? He's going to double back and begin to sift your life. Looking for where is an entry point? Where is a flaw? Where is a glitch in your armor? And most folk don't want to get into this like that. I still want to have some fun. And if I get that discipline and get into this thing to that level, the fun's going to draw up. No, it won't. The fun is going to just begin. Because you're out here now with the Holy Ghost, and there's no telling what he'll have you doing. You could be enjoying every minute of it. See, but the devil is always trying to find a way to catch you in your words, find a glitch, get a family member to try to just assault you. I mean, family members can be very detrimental to you when they're not saved because all they do is try to plague you bug you, bother you. Some folks are married to the devil. You know, you go home and the, you go back from this and the devil will be waiting on you. He'll be sitting up looking crazy and you're walking the door. <laughs> you been to that old conference. <laughs> and you walk, you were feeling good, you know, and the, about the devil comes immediately to steal the words sown in your heart. You came down the driveway whistling with your bag. You know, you had your, your, roller, your little roller bag you brought to the cover, rolling. 
come in the house. Devil. All oh, while you were gone, I ain't had nothing to eat. You had that old conference and everything just. <sighs> I had to come back up. <laughs> I had to come back up in this mess. I was feeling good. I was out on the plane singing. I was in the cab, the Uber, driving home singing. The joy bells ringing in my heart. And get to the front door and over there. Looking like the creature from the Black Lagoon looking at you. <laughs> you be like a dog. Two words could kill you. I do. <laughs> you should never, you should, you should never been there all the time, but no, I do. Do you accept I do? Oh Lord. Now slit your throat with two words. And you can't I don't now, because you I did, now you in it. <laughs> and the mess is see the left all drawn up. Everybody in my life. But that's why you got to get above all of that. So you got to let the Holy Ghost take you above all of that. So as you mount you up on wings like eagles, you got to be above that. So they can't penetrate. That's what I'm saying, man. The devil's got weapons. He's got an arsenal. And a lot of times you could be married to the weapon. That's why you got to be able to get above it in your mind because you can't let anybody stop you now. You in too deep now, man. You can't go back. You got to make up your mind. With or without sink or swim, I'm going in. And I'm not going to let anybody stop me. You say, you hadn't, you hadn't been eating the last four days. You don't want to be eating for the next six years. You keep fooling around with me. <laughs> stop fooling with me, man. I'm not playing with you. You got to be like, you got to be, let, 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 let the devil know, look, I'm not the one to be playing with, man. It's going down. And it's going down for real now. Either get in line or get out of here. The Bible says if the unbeliever departs, you're not bound in such cases. You didn't make nobody go nowhere. You just didn't compromise the word of God. So you, you stayed cordial, you stayed loving, you stayed kind. But when it comes to this word, no man. I'm not downgraded one inch. That's how you gotta live it, cause you gotta make it to heaven at all costs. So then brothers, we are not children of the bond woman, but of the free. We got to be set free. That's why we deal with deliverance and casting out devils. We deal with healing. We deal with everything that will set a person free. The objective is freedom at all cost. Galatians 6, 12, one scripture. Look at this. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Why does Creflo teach a lie? Why does Jake's teach a lie? Why do all these magicians teach lies? Because they don't want to suffer persecution. So they do what? They constrain you. Because if you go out there, the church will come under persecution and I don't want to suffer persecution so I try to block you from Jesus so you won't go out there with power and cause me to suffer persecution. And people sit there paying a stinking tithe which is not even commanded in the New Testament. There is no tithe. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says what? You don't give grudgingly nor of necessity, but God loves a cheerful giver. And he's able to make what? All grace abound toward you. You give as the Holy Ghost commands you, not 10%. These jokers are running a con game on the people, and the people justify themselves believing that somehow they're doing the will of God, not knowing 
that they're being used because they're ignorant of the spirit of the Bible. Notice I didn't say the Bible. You got to know the spirit of the Bible. It's not what the Bible says verbatim. It's the spirit of what he said. And you got to know Jesus by the spirit. No man can call Jesus Lord but by the Holy Ghost. You got to know the spirit of the Bible. You got to know what he means, not what he says. I can say a lot of things up here, but you got to know what I mean, not what I said. You ever talk to somebody and you understood what they meant? But you can misunderstand what they said, but I know what they meant. Somebody can say something wrong, but you know what they meant. Then you tell them, well, you didn't say that, so uh, you know what I meant. A kid always doing that. <laughs> you know. You told him to do something. Well, I got the, I got the drink because uh, you didn't say. You know what I meant. Now, you know I meant for you not to get it. Now, that's why you're getting, getting ready to get your little behind tanned right there. <laughs> so you got to know what God means, not what he just says. You got to know what he meant. And that can only be done from time spent with him. You got to know the character of Jesus Christ. You got to know whether or not I'm representing Jesus Christ right now or not. You got to know if this character that's putting forth this word to you right now aligns itself with the character of Jesus Christ. Don't go by the histrionics and all the trappings and all the music and all the glitz and glamour because the devil has learned to entertain people. You got to know what God is after. And we're going to deconstruct this whole church world over the next three days to show you what God is after and hopefully change your whole world view concerning church. It's a radical undertaking. It's a big job, but we are, we are committed to do it, to deconstruct the false, to see the real come to fruition. It's all about God on the move. So tomorrow we'll begin the process by viewing a, 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 a presentation by Derek Prince entitled Husbands and Fathers, a video called Husbands and Fathers. Letting you know the foundation of the church is built on husbands and fathers. Not just men. Leadership in the church has to be husbands and fathers, according to 1 Timothy chapter 3 and Titus. You got to be proven at your home and govern your home well to transfer that leadership and governance of your home to the church. What does a husband and father being one do for you? It teaches you selflessness. You get married to your wife. It takes a step down into selflessness to keep the marriage together. You add kids to that, it's going to take a big step down into selflessness. <laughs> because a kid is totally dependent on you to live. So you can't do what you want to do anymore. A lot of folk don't get married because they're not selfless. They're so selfish, they stay by themselves. But see, God qualifies you, and he appoints you and anoints you, and he places you based on your stepping into realms of selflessness. The Roman Catholic Church told these guys not to get married, now they're sodomizing altar boys. Because the Bible says one of the delusions of the last days is they'll command you not to marry, forbidding to marry, the Bible says. And it turned these men into sodomite freaks. So we got to get this thing back in order. It's a quest for divine order. That's what's necessary. We're going to deconstruct and reconstruct the next three or four days. You're going to be amazed, some of you, at the stuff that you didn't know what was in you as we deal with it. Friday, we'll begin with that process. Saturday, we're going to have a delivery service. We cast out demons. That's what most people start, you know, having something to do or got a headache or something like that. That's the demon. When I say that, you feel that, that's the demon. See, so the demons are always evident. They'll make you feel like, demons? That's the demon. <laughs> you see, it's easy to pick them out. They, you look at your friend like, that's the demon. That's a demon looking at you like that. When they, when they look at you, shot like, they're going to catch. That's the demon. <laughs> this, see, they're not far-fetched and weird creatures. They're scared because they don't want to leave. They look for embodiment because you're a warm, wet environment. Remember, Jesus said they walk through dry places, find no red. They want a warm, wet, wet place to stay, and you're it. They're like a cockroach or something. 
So when you begin to peel back the layers and you find them, they get mad and they get shook up and they do stuff because they don't want to go. It's not a big deal. How many churches do you know that cast out demons? For real. How is it we got all these churches? And Jesus said one of the signs that follow a believer is we'll cast out demons and don't nobody cast out no demons. Letting you know what? The demons run the church. The demons run the church. One thing I'll say, the church we came up in when I came into salvation, that's one thing that separated them from the rest of the church in Atlanta. They cast out demons. It was volatile now. It was, it was some wild stuff going on because they cast out demons. Because when you engage the enemy, it's not pretty, it's not pristine, and it's not sanitized. To engage the enemy and deal with the demons is real. And demons are not even real to the vast majority of church folks. Remember this always. Spiritual enemies, the demons, camp out in the normal. They don't look strange. They're not crazy. They're intellectual. You got demons that came out of Harvard, Yale, Princeton. They're not, these are personalities. They are disembodied personalities. They will talk with you. They will go right outside in the lobby out there, and a demon will talk to you about nuclear physics. He'll talk to you about math and how you doing, brother? Did you enjoy the service? Be a demon. Oh, and put his hand on your shoulder. Did you like, yeah, that was great, wasn't it? I can't wait to Saturday in the deliverance service. Can you be a demon? <laughs> and you said, no, you be thinking it's your brother in the Lord. You got to, see, you got to get your mind back right. The devil, they're not going to come and tell you, listen, I'm the devil. He ain't going to do that. He ain't going to go with the Bible and, Martin, did you enjoy the service? It was great, wasn't it, brother? I have a church back in where I came from. It was a great church where I came. That's to be a demon possessed church. And he said, I met a brother at the conference. Uh, uh, Calissa, we're gonna go back home. And I met a brother at the conference. He told me about a church back home. We gonna go. You know, you be going to a demonized church, but leaving that track. You got to be able to know what you're in, man. Everything that that glitters ain't gold. You can be in here. It could be, it could be a kook in here. And you be thinking, everybody, your brother and sister in the Lord, you better weigh the fruit of a person. They come, you looking all crazy. You know, we have, every time we have one of these things, it's always some kind of a prophet showing up or somebody trying to heal somebody or something. But just leave them standing with it. They're out in the lobby talking about, yeah, brother, can I? Lay, no, man, later, man. Just his head off. Don't feel nothing for nobody, man. Cut them. You don't, this is your eternal destiny. This is your soul. You don't have time to play with folks. You can't control another person's weirdness and their kookiness, but you can control what affects you and affects you. Get out of there. The devil is a very astute religious individual. He knows the tricks of the trade. That joker knows all the vernacular. He knows all the right verbiage. He, if the devil was up there talking, he would enthrall you. That joker would be quoting the Bible. You'd be thinking, this is a man of God. This is an anointed vessel of the Lord. He quoted the whole book of Ephesians and didn't even take a breath. Anointed cherubim. <laughs> You're right. He anointed cherubim, all right. He didn't miss a beat with Jesus, for it is written. He talking to the Son of God. The Lord shall give his angels charge over thee, lest you dash your foot <laughs> upon a stone. And Jesus said, but it is written again. <laughs> you know, you got to know, man, because that joker will take that word with the wrong spirit and wrap it around your head and deceive you, and you'll know it's right. I'm telling you, the safety valve against the devil it's you in your room with your plate turned over, laying prostrate before the living God until he fills you with the Holy Ghost and you know God like you know your best friend. That's your safety veil. Not in here, not back in somebody's church, 
not with your buddies and pals, have you put in the personal time with God to know when the devil is around? You don't learn counterfeit money by studying, studying counterfeit money. You learn counterfeit money by doing what? Studying real money. That's how you get it. If you don't spend time with the Lord, you won't be able to pick out the devil. I'm telling you, we're about to go into the greatest deceptions in the history of the world. Judgments have already come. The world's not going to be judged for homosexuality. Homosexuality is the judgment. See, people, God going to judge us for homosexuality. The homosexuality is the judgment. Read Romans chapter 1. It's already a judgment been loosed. Homosexuality was the judgment. God's not going to judge the Baptist church for Calvinism and once saved, always saved. Believing in once saved, always saved is the judgment. He's turned them over to a strong delusion that they would believe a lie that they might be damned. Can't you see the belief in the delusion is the judgment? They'll go down to the mega fest. They're not going to be judged for going to the mega fest. Going to the mega fest is the judgment. That's earth shattering to a lot of people because they believe that trash is real. The belief in it is the judgment. You believed in a lie and a strong delusion and it's got you. You don't fall prey to the delusions when the Holy Ghost got you anchored. When you anchored, man, amen, y'all can go. All 500 of y'all can go. I'm not going. You got to walk alone in this and be able to identify where the delusions are. We're going to wrap it up for tonight. I know y'all sleepy, but if you've been here before, you know it's fast paced. We pack a whole lot into a short period of time because we don't have the luxury of time anymore. What we got to do, we got to do it now. You got to change now. You got to be prepared now for what's to come. This thing is on and it's popping. You go back home, I know what your face back at your house. I, you don't have to tell me. I know what you got living next door to you in the same apartment building. I know what some of your family members look like. I know you're facing hell on earth because hell has been loosed on earth. This thing is different. This is not the same thing this time. You've never seen a presidential election like this. Look at the news every day. This is chaos. This is anarchy. Somebody got to remain sane and calm in the midst of this rampant increase of, of, of delusions and depravity. Somebody got to stay calm in the midst of the storm. We need the Holy Ghost. You know, we're not specializing in working stuff up. You know, I don't work stuff up, but I got to have the real thing. This child laying upstairs hurting, breast cancer, spreading into an abdomen, eating their guts out of them. Man, I'm going to stand here and be happy? Not me, man. You got two things on top of you if you read that. Dissatisfaction and disappointment. I need to have that change. I need to have satisfaction and make my appointments. I need satisfaction. I need to be walking around feeling satisfied. If you're happy in this, if you're satisfied with this, there's something wrong with you. I can't see another magician standing up on TV and just talking. All this talking makes you want to puke. And the apostle said, I don't come with enticing words of man's wisdom. I come with a demonstration of power. Stand on your feet if you would, please, and we'll dismiss. Lord, it's time for a new move. It's time for a fresh cruise. It's time for a new cruise of oil, God, new people. We need extraction. We need to come out of the wilderness of the church and move into relationship with Jesus Christ. Relationship is the promised land. Church has been a holding tank as you have equipped us, forged us, and prepared us. But now it's time to move out into the realm of manifestation where the glorified church without spot or blemish comes forth. God, 
It's people that really need to be healed. It's folks that really need to be delivered. It's folks that really need a word from the Lord and the gift of prophecy to be activated. Tongues, interpretation of tongues, the gift of faith, miracles, discerning of spirits. We need power, power, power. Power to break the chains of iniquity. The Bible says the yoke shall be taken from off of our necks because of the anointing. The anointing breaks the yoke in Jesus' name. God, I'm dead serious. I'm not here satisfied about my Isha land up there half dead from cancer with three little kids back at the house. Girls standing stronger than most folks stand who are totally well and been standing right on anyway. What do we have to complain about? What do we have to be unhappy about? Talking about I got an ache or a pain and I don't care about that. We need power. Power. In Jesus' name. Get tired. I'm not tired. Talking about being sleepy. And this girl got a breast eating off of her chest, eaten away by cancer, and I'm tired, I'm sleepy, I'm weary. God, we need some people that's got a determination. We got to have a steadfast, immovable people that will not be denied. We need a new breed of saint that are tired of religion, tired of pump and circumstance, tired of rituals, tired of festivals, tired of preaching, tired of all this singing, Tired of all this make-believe dress, dress, dressed up mess. We need to see real power. Power that can interdict. Power that can heal. Power that can raise the dead. Power that can open blind eyes. Power that can restore limbs to normal. The book of Acts stands as a witness against us. And I'm not going to bypass one line, not one jot, not one tittle. This thing has to work just like it's written. The Bible says that we would do exploits. The Bible says greater works would we do because you went to your father. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, you'll speak with new tongues. You'll cast out devils. You'll lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. If you eat or drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. This is no longer verbiage. This thing has to be activated. It has to be actualized, no longer theorized. I'm not here to impress anybody with a bunch of verbiage with this child laying up, upstairs half dead. I'm not interested in being a preacher. Not interested in a bunch of sermons and a bunch of talk. We need activated power. The Bible says to give you no rest until you reign righteousness upon the earth. We need to plague you. We need to dog you. We need to hound you until something breaks forth in Jesus' name. The song says, spirit break out. Break these walls down. Heaven come down in Jesus' name. This thing ain't funny. This ain't nothing to play with. We got kids in our families half crazy. Nephews, nieces, almost insane. Lesbians, homosexuals, freaks, perverts, and coots. Folks bound by all kinds of addictions, sexual perversions, pornography, all kinds of trash that's got their souls bound, chained, and anchored. Prepare for hell. If they died tonight, they'd go to hell. Are you mean to tell me don't nobody care? No man careth? Don't nobody care about nobody down here? If the
they died tonight, they'd wake up in hell. We need somebody, somebody somewhere that would care enough to sacrifice up their lives for this. We stay on this internet all the time, week after week, almost begging these people to do something. Baptize and fill people with the Holy Ghost and fire. Why not? If not, why not? River flow over these folk. Break down walls. Make the devil go away. Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. God, I'm asking for resurrection power to come on her life. Translate her, God, into another place in her life. Let the power of God take over where man is left off and do a new work in her life. In Jesus' name. We got to see an outpouring. We got to see power poured out. I pray that you well up like a river. I pray that you pour out your spirit on all flesh. I pray that people dream dreams. I pray that they have visions. I pray that we move into a whole nother church paradigm. It's out with the old and in with the new. If the Gadarene demoniac can hold 2,000 demons, how much Holy Ghost can a soul hold? How much Holy Ghost can a person really hold? If 2,000 spirit beings can house a, a man, how much power can a person really hold? This is a river that overflows. This thing has no ending. We're dealing with an eternal being with no beginning and no ending. You can't get to the end of God. You can never ask God every question because the questions would never end because he's an eternal mind. He'll keep thinking forever. How can you talk to somebody that has no beginning and no ending and just exist? This is the power we're trying to be filled with. Eternal life, eternal power, no beginning and no ending. God can do anything if he can just find a vessel to fill. The eternality of God, no beginning, no ending. A sea of eternal thought, just existing, still creating solar systems as we stand here. Doing a new thing every day. Where did he come from? Where is he going? Has no beginning and no ending. He came from nowhere, he's going nowhere. God, that's the power we need. We can override anything on this planet with eternal power. And the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. God, we need some hunger in people. If people would just hunger and thirst after righteousness, verily they would be filled. We need the Holy Ghost, first of all, to birth hunger, spiritual hunger in people. Well, they're not filled. They don't feel full. They don't have it. They want more. Folks are so laid back and cavalier. And don't, they don't even care about this like that. They don't care. They can take it or leave it. We need somebody that's got some drive, somebody that wants this thing more than they want to live. I got to have this thing. I got to experience this thing. I want to really know what God can do to me and through me. Spiritual hunger is what we're after, God. Birth it. Take it up to the extreme. Bring this thing alive in Jesus' name. We're not here to play. We got real problems. We got real issues. We got loved ones that are damned.
We got mothers that are damned. We got fathers that are damned. Sisters, brothers that are damned. Uncles and aunts that are damned. Nieces and nephews damned. Co-workers damned. And to sit here a pacifist, accepting the status quo, compromising, and laughing and joking and coking all day, why these folk go to hell? Not me. Call me what you want to. Call me what you will. Somebody's got to do something now. Somebody's got to take it to the next level. We don't have these conferences to play. We're seeking, we're asking, we're knocking. Every year we come here seeking and asking and knocking. Do you have some people? Are there 7,000 people who have not bowed the knee to Baal? God, from the north, the south, the east, and west, overseas, in Europe, Asia, Africa. I don't care where you get them from. From the islands, distant lands, the Middle East, the Far East, the Near East, who cares? You've got some folks somewhere. You've got a ram in the bush somewhere that will do this thing. All you're looking for is volunteers. Somebody that will say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. Isaiah says, look, here am I. Send me. I'll do it. it. It ain't looking for no preacher. Not looking for no pastor, no prophet, no apostle. It ain't looking for nobody, no evangelist. I'm not looking for nobody else. I'll do this myself. This time it's going to be done. And I'm going to be sure it's done because I'll do it myself. This is a do-it-yourself gospel this time. I ain't looking for nobody to do nothing about this but me. I'll do it myself. I'm looking to get on the front line and be a frontline fighter to bring this thing to a conclusion. This has to come to a conclusion. You don't grow weary in well-doing because you're a reaping due season if you faint not. This thing's got to happen. The book of Acts, dissatisfaction. Man, it's all over you. Dissatisfaction. Not satisfied. This thing ain't measuring up. Something ain't right. Something is missing. We need the Holy Ghost. We need a breakout of power. We need to see God on the move. God in this conference, do something supernatural. I mean, for real, take us to another place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you here in the morning, y'all. In the morning, we'll be on the move again. What you got, Dana? Okay, that's the hospitality suite. Remember, hospitality suite right over here, one hall over, suite 131 for breakfast and uh, snacks and stuff are around all the time. So make sure you take advantage of, uh, of the hospitality suite. See you back here in the morning, y'all. Get some rest tonight. It's 1120. Of course, y'all just got the night people who stay up all night anyway in the hospitality suite goofing off. So <laughs> you might be one of the night people. <laughs>